Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to share my review of the Hike Micro B20 infrared camera. Okay, full disclosure. I did not go out and buy this camera. The folks at Hike Micro contacted me and said, hey, would you be willing to review our camera? I said, yeah, go ahead and send me one and I'll check it out for you. So they sent me this camera about two months ago. I've had it for a while, been playing around with it, had one of the inspectors on our team use it for about a month to kind of get an idea of how much we like it. And today I'm sharing with you my honest opinion of it. I am not being compensated for this review other than getting the camera, that's it. So this is an infrared camera. It's a traditional pistol style camera. I'm gonna compare it a little bit to the FLIR E6 because it's, it's kind of the one that we use most often here at Structure Tech. Most of the inspectors in my company use this one or a newer handheld camera. It's not the pistol style. It's more like a, a cell phone style camera. But uh, so looking at the two of these, the B20 is significantly smaller and I appreciate that. As for specs, this camera has a resolution of 192 by 256 and I, I said that in the right order. It's 192 wide, 256 high. Unfortunately, it's a portrait orientation. It has a field of view of 37.2 degrees by 50 degrees. And it's got a built-in lithium ion battery that's supposed to give it a six hour working life. And it has an insane amount of storage, 16 gigabytes. What would you ever do with 16 gigabytes? I mean, these photos that it stores are very tiny. So, I, I, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's ridiculous over the top as far as storage. You should probably, uh, I, I can't imagine filling up that storage in a lifetime. So, lots of storage, that's very nice. So, some pros and cons with this camera. I will start with the cons. Number one, which I already mentioned, is portrait mode. All of the images that we capture for home inspection reports are either in landscape format or they are square. So I, it, it's really annoying to have portrait mode on this camera. If we started using this in my company and all the inspectors started using it, I would just tell them, look, you need to hold the camera like this to take all of your photos, sideways gangster style. And then all of the text on the images is gonna show up sideways, which is annoying, but that's what we got. So I, I, I don't like the fact that it's in portrait mode. Another thing I don't like about this camera is that every time you need to capture an image, you need to double pull the trigger. Who does that? This is the only infrared camera I've ever tried where you had to, had to double pull the trigger to take an image. Maybe this is something that could be fixed with a firmware update. And yes, I said fixed. I, I call this broken. That, <laughs> that is really obnoxious. It is what it is. So there's that. Another, another slight complaint I have about this camera is that there's no sleep mode. With, say, the FLIR E6, which we're used to, you, you turn this camera on and it, it takes a while to boot up. It's kind of annoying. It takes like... 45 seconds for this camera to boot up but once you turn it off you, you go to turn it back on and it turns on really quickly it's it's got the sleep mode i don't know how long that lasts for i've never timed it but with the b20 there is no sleep mode when you turn it off it's off and you have to fully boot it back up again on the positive side boot up is much faster than the FLIR. it takes about 10 seconds for this thing to be fully off to fully on and up and running which i really like and with the six hour battery life i mean i don't know i i could see myself just not turning this camera off a whole lot knowing that it's easily going to get me through a full day of doing home inspections so it's it's a bit of a complaint uh, another small complaint i have about that is that it doesn't have a swappable battery with, say, the FLIR E6, we've got a battery that pops out 
I don't know if, uh, if I think I'm gonna be using my camera all day, maybe I could buy a spare battery and have it all charged up and ready to go. Not that I have ever done that though, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it, it just seems like it would be nice if I wanted that option. This one doesn't have it. I guess neither do most mobile phones today. So shouldn't, shouldn't complain too much about it, but I don't know. It's something that I like about the FLIR. Another complaint I have about this camera is that it, it does have, well, let, let's just take a look at the front here. We've got three openings here. One is for the optical camera. That's just taking regular pictures. It's a two megapixel camera. And as far as I'm concerned, the option of recording images with this camera might as well not even exist because it is, because it is so clunky. You need to go into the menu and you need to scroll down a ways until you open a menu option and then open another menu option and then open another menu option. It's like several options deep. And then you need to select camera and then you need to do back, 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 back to get back to what you were doing. And then you can pull the trigger to record an optical image. Whereas with the FLIR, what I'm used to, I pull the trigger once and I have my camera set to record both an infrared image and an optical image at the same time. I love that feature. This camera ought to do it. It feels like a firmware upgrade could change that, but as for now, it does not do that. So it's kind of obnoxious. And then the next opening here is the infrared lens and it's, it's covered right now. It's got this dust cover. Let me show you, let me open it. Now the dust cover is open, now it's closed. I would appreciate it if that dust cover would cover the optical lens as well. It can be done. FLIR did it. Look at this. See, we close that and it covers both the optical and the infrared. But on the B20, it only covers the infrared. Why? I'd have to say this was an oversight. Somebody should have made it cover both. And then the last thing to point out on here, we've got a light on the front, a little LED light. It has about the same power as the LED light on my phone. I have a Pixel 5 Android phone. It's about the same power as that light. Maybe not quite as bright. That is to say, it's nearly useless. You have to go into a bunch of menu options to get to the light. It's not a bunch, but you have to go in the menu, you have to turn the light on, and then you got something the equivalent of your mobile phone. Why even bother? If you're going to put a light on there, make it useful. You know, maybe instead of whatever this is, 20 lumens or something, make it 200 lumens. Sure, it'll suck down the battery life. Who cares? Make it useful. I, I guess it's better than nothing at all, but it's not great. Okay, so those are my complaints with the camera. Now let's get into the good stuff. Number one, the screen resolution is really good. I already covered it. It's 192 by 256. The images look very crisp, very clear when you are in infrared only mode. When I compare it to say the E6, this is the older model of the E6, has a resolution of 160 by 120. When I compare it to this camera and we're in infrared only mode, the images look a lot better. I mean, they should, it's higher resolution, but I've tried cameras that have high resolution ratings and the images just don't look that great. With this camera, they really do look good. This camera does not have a feature that FLIR cameras have. It's this MSX technology where it draws lines over all of the high contrast areas in your image and it really makes things pop. So if I'm including infrared images in my inspection report, it makes it really clear what I'm taking an image of, but sometimes if it's only infrared, you can't quite tell what you're looking at. This camera doesn't have the same technology. What it does is something called image blending, where it takes your optical image and it overlays it with the infrared image to kind of help you understand what you're looking at. That is nothing new. That type of technology has been around for other infrared camera manufacturers for, I don't know, I want to say at least a decade. Lots of camera manufacturers offer that option. So I'm, I'm glad it has it. It's just nothing special. It, it helps me 
identify what it is that I'm taking images of, but if I'm actually going around scanning stuff and I'm looking for thermal anomalies as a home inspector, I think it almost makes it more difficult for me to find what I'm looking for. So that's what we got. Next, I like the dust cover on here. We've got this dust, well, it, it's got a USB-C charging port. Everything ought to be USB-C these days. And for the dust cover, when I open this up, it stays right where it is. Now, I'm, I'm used to this other one here where you open up that dust cover and it wants to push on the cable constantly. And we've destroyed the charging ports on a lot of our FLIRs because of that. And okay, I'm not trying to make this about FLIR, but this is smart design. I like what they did with the dust cover here. And then last thing I like about this is that it's got this feature where you can stream the images from your camera to your mobile device. If you're a home inspector and you write home inspection reports on your mobile device, it's kind of clunky to get images from your infrared camera over to your phone or your tablet or whatever you're using. It's, it's an extra step, but with the Hike Micro B20, you just go in your menu options, you do it one time, you set it up so that every time you turn your camera on, it's going to create its own Wi-Fi network. It casts Wi-Fi, and you also have it set up to stream your screen. You just you set it so it always does that, and then all you gotta do is you, you take out your phone, and you go into the settings, and you select this camera for your Wi-Fi network. It takes a second to connect. Sometimes the connections were a little bit buggy. It wouldn't connect reliably every single time I did this, but you connect to that network, and then you go into the app that they give you. You open up the app. You do a couple of clicks to open up the camera, and next thing you know, you are streaming from the camera to your phone. And then you can you can click the capture button right on your mobile device and then it saves the image on your mobile device. Okay, so I think I've gone through all of the pros and cons with this camera. So what it comes down to is what's, what's the verdict? Sh should you get this camera? Well, if it was a $2,000 camera, I'd say it's overpriced, it's probably not worth it, but this camera has a price point of right around $550. And for that, I'd say this is very good value. It's, it's not the greatest camera ever made, but boy, I, I don't know that you're going to get more infrared camera for your money. I'd say this camera is plenty enough for any home inspector out there. I wouldn't hesitate to buy this camera if I'm going to be buying any more pistol style cameras for my company. If more home inspectors on my team want this style over the the, the mobile phone style, the pocket style of infrared camera, we will likely be going with this camera. Not 100% uh, not sure about that, but I'm really leaning towards it. I think you get very good value with this. So that is my summary of the Hike Micro B20 infrared camera. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.